or tune on something entertaining, you know, that's a little more, because I don't, I'm not getting this. So we're going to move on yeah. to some of the people who've been waiting for a while. We've gotten through the original, original Theist callers, so we're going to go ahead and hit um, Alonzo in Garland, Texas. You want to talk about the importance of the Renaissance and Enlightenment and how it influenced us in the modern day. Um, that is a humongous topic. Can we narrow yeah. it down a little? Like, can you maybe give us the summary version? Yeah. Um, okay. Hello there. C- can you guys hear me? Yeah, you yeah, sound yeah, great. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, I just wanted to say uh, uh, Tracy, Phil, and uh, the others, such as Matt and Don and everybody, first of all, I wanted to thank you guys for just helping me out through a huge, huge amount of depression, anxiety, and stress that I've had mm. for uh, for just four years straight due to being in Catholicism. I remember four years ago, I I used to doubt myself. I was doubting my beliefs, and I kept that as a secret from my parents. My parents are still religious, but uh, at least they acknowledged what they were doing was wrong because they were uh, religiously oppressing me with the whole entire uh, Catholic system. Wow. And that just made me feel very, very insecure. And I remember... In private, I was on the internet, and I found people such as uh, Christopher Hitchens, George Carlin, Jim Jeffries, and I said, apart from this being funny, this is the reality that a lot of people face are facing, and I'm going through, and I'm going through it too. And then when I found you guys, I said, holy shit. This is absolutely amazing. I am listening to people who are actually using their goddamn brain. I mean, I was just, I was, I was just, I, I felt so, so happy. And of course, I was watching uh, older episodes and the new. I'm just episodes. like the first tier, too, because there get, there's people using a lot more brain power. So, yeah, it gets more amazing as you move up the, up the ladder. <laughs> yeah, and if you're impressed but, now, wait till you wait till you really get in, get get on YouTube. Yeah, and TED when talks. I, <laughs> yeah, but my whole my whole point is before I get into the into the topic that I wanted to talk about, and yes, I will narrow narrow it down. Okay, don't worry. Thank you. Um, is uh, I just wanted to say thank you very much. I sure. really really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. it. It comes from the bottom of my heart. Yeah, I love and I that. just want. I just want everybody to know that that you guys are. I, I literally respect you guys as if you guys were philosophers to me. I no, know. no. I feel very, <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, I mean, I there's some, some people hosting may think they are. I, I don't think I am. Um, but let me just say, I thank you so much for letting us know that we were helpful to you because that's what we're our goal is yeah. to try and help people. So if we were helpful, that's great. Um, and yeah, if you can summarize that topic, it's gonna be amazing because there's like entire semester courses on what your yeah. your topic is here. So what do you got? Lay it on me. Okay, so what I wanted to talk about, as you know, was the importance of the Renaissance and the Enlightenment. But I am going to narrow it down mm-hmm. and just to the uh, just to the Enlightenment, just to get the Renaissance out of the way. Okay. So, so um, I've been learning about the Enlightenment for uh, for a couple of years now, and it's been a really, really important. Uh, as we know, it's it's been a really, really important. Uh, time in human history where, in my personal point of view, people have literally just stepped up and said, hey, all of you guys are just batshit crazy. We need to establish, well, I wouldn't say I, we need We need to establish a new system. This is just this is just how it is. We we we're all born e- we're bo- we're all born equal, and of course that that's been going up and going up and going up throughout the years. And of course, I would believe back in that time, with religious people would just go crazy about it and think that I don't know what would they would think back then. But if, but I don't really think I would like to know what they were thinking. Um, but. Yeah, the Enlightenment uh, um, uh, figures such as uh, John Locke. He was—he's uh, actually the for me the central figure. 
Um, and when I started to study about him, apart from uh, others such as uh, Montesquieu, I hope I'm pronouncing right. his name right. I, I really hope I am. Uh, Rene Descartes, uh, Francis Bacon, uh, v Voltaire. And for me, Voltaire is an important one because I believe, if I remember correctly, he was the one who said that we should have freedom of religion, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I, don't know. I just remember him from Candide or Optimism. Like that. I remember the book. Um, Candide, the, yeah. the book. Yeah, that was, that's the one I read. Yeah. You know, the best of all possible worlds. Yeah, and um, then um, we were, I was looking about, uh, we, well, I was looking, sorry. I was um, uh, learning about this in, in, um, in world history class, and there was somebody there that I didn't even, uh, that I didn't even notice, and it was uh, Mary, uh, holy crap, this name. Um, it's okay. Wollstonecraft? <laughs> yeah, Mary it's, Wollstonecraft, it's right. I think it is. It's the concepts that matter, right? Yeah, it's yeah. the concept that, that, that matters. And um, when I was uh, investigating about her in my free time, I discovered a, a lot of things about her, such as uh, a feminist f f philosopher. Uh, I think in one occasion I found that, they, that a lot of people uh, called her uh, the feminist icon. And, yeah, I would see how that would actually get into... Um, into women's rights. And because back then, I can imagine just women being, what, what's the word that I'm trying to look for? Help me out here. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Um, oh, God. Uh, well, I mean, what, express the concept. If you can't think of the word, express the concept. Yeah, uh, as in... Mm, a lot of people, the majority of men, treating uh, women as if they were nothing, just objects, Less and than. not sure. Yeah, basically mm -hmm. equal. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. That that that's the whole. That that's you know what I've been studying and just uh, seen of the Enlightenment. Okay. And mm -hmm. yeah. And when you even come to think about. Um, the Enlightenment, as in, well, how it uh, influenced us now in the modern days. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think about, I, I, I think, how would the modern day be? How would these modern day days be if the Enlightenment or the Renaissance never happened? I mean, it would just be absolutely terrible to be honest with you because if you have if you have a if you have a a totalitarian system governing you every single day and countless people convicting you of thought crime then my question is how the hell are you going to live well somebody would, could invade yeah. Right. Things, so you could get somebody, you know, from another from another part of the world that comes over and says, "Ah, you're not very um, you, you're not very technologically advanced over here. You haven't had your Renaissance yet, so here's our opportunity." Um, and yeah, you could kind of go in. You could you could end up being governed by somebody who you know has a better army or better you know better uh, st like staffed and equipped mm -hmm. military. <laughs> Um, that could always happen. Uh, who knows if you would get something worse or something basically like a you know, roll of the dice. I don't know. Or people yeah, could yeah. revolt, right? You could have people that revolt. I mean, people get tired of it and just say, hey, this is just getting worse and worse. And, it's, you know, it's not. It maybe it doesn't stay yeah, more yeah, the same. True. Yeah, yeah true. But, <laughs> but just imagine if the, if the Renaissance and the Enlightenment never happened. Just, just, just imagine the scene. If the Renaissance and the Enlightenment never happened, it's 2019, and those two events never happened, uh, we have different regions of the world mm -hmm. governed by different religions, uh, Christianity in one part, Islam in one part, uh, Judaism in one part, and so on and so on, then, then of course, people, some people are going to re revolt or rebel against it, but of course, it has to be a big community of people that others have to be heard from, 
or wait, wait. Well, I mean, Rome right. got overthrown and they were pretty powerful, right? Yeah. I mean, they went down. So it happens. Mm-hmm. I mean, it can happen. And, uh, or you know, wars. I mean, look at that. Look at, think about people when they were living in Rome, right? And Rome was pretty much the thing that, that was this sort of, um, I'm not going to paint it as, as wonderful because obviously they were super oppressive to people. Uh, they pretty much went and said, are you going to join us in an alliance or do we have to just kill you all, right? And we can be friends or we can kill you uh, was sort of their strategy. But in the end, um, if you looked at what Rome was doing, it was sort of the uh, setting up a structure, like this expansive structure yeah. that that went out and expanded. And, and so, I mean, when that fell, I can see how people would be like, what the hell is going to happen when Rome falls? Because now you've just got all these like tribal situations mm-hmm. happening all, I mean, it was like, I would be so fearful during that time to see the government of Rome fall, right? And and to know, I mean, who? I mean, I might be like, oh, it's so corrupt. Who cares? But I might, I, I would still see it as somehow stabilizing as far as what's outside the walls, right? And what's going to happen when this whole thing collapses and it's the it's the entire infrastructure, right? So, I mean, that, that would have been a scary time, too, and yet somehow we rose from those ashes. I kind of think that information – I've heard a quote one time that said something like, if all of science was lost, we would be able to rebuild science because yeah. it's observable and test. You know what I mean? It's like something you can learn again. And I almost think yep. that, certain, that certain information or certain progress of information is, can't, can't be halted, you know, that you can't really stop it. You can try to stop it or try to put – um, mitigating yeah. thing, you know, walls too. on it to say we can't investigate this or you can't test that or you can't go here. Um, but there's, I mean, what do they just had those babies in China that they gene edited? You can put up barriers. Who knows if they're going to, you know, stop somebody from editing a pair of twins. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you you can try to stop things like that. And, and that that's even one where it's like, whoa, is that even ethical? There's a whole lot of questions about yeah. that, right? I mean, I personally have no issue with it. But some people were freaked out a lot. Of, I think I would say pretty much globally people were flipped out. And with other things um, like information such as evolution, it's kind of hard to hide that because once people start breeding animals, they start to realize you can change the – you know, the actual structure of this thing by choosing what you breed for. So it, it starts to become obvious, right? You, it starts to become kind of like you can't, you can't really deny what you're looking at and what you're able to control by te- basically testing with that, even, with, even if it's not the standard idea of a laboratory test. That's what people are doing, right? We're testing things all the time, even if we're not scientists. Yep. So, I mean, so, I, yeah. underst- I understand what you're saying. These were huge contributions, but I, I kind of think that if they didn't happen, it wouldn't be a, a matter of them never happening. I think they would have just happened differently. Yeah, just later on, like depending on what barriers were in place. Yeah, or, it, it would be know. interesting to be able to see all those alternate realities, you know what I mean? To say, ooh, what would have happened if this, you know, that or whatever, but who knows? Uh, Got to wait on the holidays. Yeah, that's that. a Netflix original series, you know, waiting to be born. So um, I want to thank you for your call, Alonzo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so thank you guys for, for, for accepting my call, and I hope you guys have a, an amazing day and as well uh, an amazing r- rest of the year. I, again, right. thank you guys for for, uh, okay. for getting me out of that system. I really, really, uh, r- 